Today I'm walking down this abandoned rail line where there's actually 32 abandoned locomotives that were once used by New Jersey Transit. They extend all the way down there, and as you can see, they extend all the way behind me as well. So we're just gonna walk around, see what we can find, and maybe even get into a couple of them. You can see all along these actually, how much vandalism and damage there is. Climb right up, walk right in. Yeah. Walk all the way through. Oh, this is a really good one. You have your reverse, or you have uh, your throttle here. And uh, if you pull it up, pull it back with the reverser in, this will make your train go. Acknowledge button, lamp test, all these will, uh, should light up. Here's your speedometer, mile per hour. Ditch lights, here are your brakes. So, oh, that's cool. so it actually is engraved, it says brake. You have your release on both sides, and this is still the main um, control panel. Well, that's pretty cool. So this is this should be your train brakes, and this should be your locomotive brakes. So automatic and independent. Independent for the locomotive, automatic for the train. That is what the airlines are attached to. And uh, if you're on the train, and, or you're passing a train, and you hear, that is this. So, uh, that's really cool. On the floor, you have your dead man switches. So these pretty much say, hey, I'm awake, or I'm still here. So, no, the engineer cannot just get up mid-train, or mid-journey, like journey and say, you know what, I gotta go to the bathroom. And he just leaves the cab. So, the dead man switch, if it is not hit for a periodically, like a for a certain amount of time, periodically, um, the train will actually stop. And doesn't matter what this position is, doesn't matter what this position is, or these. It will literally put the train into emergency. That switch does not have to be activated, nothing here. If you don't press that switch, you lose pretty much driving privileges. And it's not fun because a foreman has to call you and you get in trouble. So power source changeover. Um, so my guess is that's uh, either side of the locomotive. Um, headlights, everything. Yeah. Oh, looks like someone's panties are here. No <laughs> shot. Where? It's inside there. And if you do this. Do that. So we're here in the cab area of the locomotive, and you can actually walk in through these. It's a really tight fit, but there's a lot of cool stuff back here. And at the end of this little corridor is actually... Hi! Oh, hello, how are you? I found a signal flag. Okay. So a signal flag can be used if you need a flag crossing. So the, cro the railroad crossing is malfunctioning. You need to hand signals or you're coupling up to another train. So you could use it for many different things, but very, very important part of a locomotive. And they still use them to this day. I've seen just a rag with a regular tree branch and they took staple to it and they called it a signal flag. So at the end of this little corridor here is actually another area where the train engineer can operate the train from, just like what I just came from. Let's see. Yep. So this is another area where the engineer can drive the train. Looks like most of this is actually still here, which is nice to see. People didn't completely gut it yet. And we can loop around, go back out where we came from. And I can't imagine how hot this would be in here while the train was running. One, because it's really tight, and two, because the engine is literally right here. You see all the different parts of it. When that train is running, it's running hot. These engines are very powerful. And so we looped around and we're back 
exactly where we started here. You can really see the difference in quality between this end and the other end of this locomotive, which is just how much is left here. This is almost completely gutted, and the other side, there's pretty much everything there that was originally there. So, more people just came in here, and gutted this, and went right back out. Yeah, it's really tight back here. So as you can see, it's really close quarters in here. We're actually inside the train engine itself right now. These are the older style tickets uh, as they have updated them. So these have been actually canceled out. So the New Jersey Transit logo is either up here or down here. I forget. I think it's up here. But um, this is round trip. This is back when they had round trip tickets instead uh, today. They just give you two tickets, which is a pain in the butt, but They're like a time capsule. Look at that. Yeah, that's really cool. That is really cool. Oh, cool. So this is uh what you get when you don't have a ticket. So if you can if you pay the conductor, it will give you all the stops. Um all the lines. So this is on the Montclair Booten line. Um, and then this is the, this is January 20th, uh, train tech, uh, train check, it's canceled, um, this gives you the fare, it, uh, in our, inbound to New York Penn Station or outbound, and the date and the fare paid, this is really cool, so the conductors, if you are on the train, they have these giant books that they actually carry, and in here, um, if you look at the top, there's some little notches where they actually ripped this out of a little book. So uh, that's that's how they uh, still do tickets. And if you look, that's where you can rip it. And then this was for the conductor to uh, document the ticket. These trains, I know a little bit of background history on these. These were paid for by the government. The reason why they're sitting here is because New Jersey Transit got a new type of locomotive, uh, I'm sorry, a new type of rail car called the bi-levels. And the bi-levels were, are what you see on Midtown Direct trains or um, revenue service on the Northeastern Corridor, North Jersey Coast Line, Montclair Booten Line, Dover Line, and then any um, line that's out of New York Penn Station, they will have them. And the reason that they... Oh, here's the toilet! Ow. Um, so the reason why they got rid of them... How the hell would they even use that? <laughs> do your business and then there should be a little handle somewhere around here. So, yep. So this You'd is, have to like climb climb over. This is a flush. Yeah. That's some glamorous living right there. Oh, okay. So this would just go like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And there's your toilet brush. Nice. Clean locomotive is a happy locomotive. That's it. So the reason why they got rid of these is because the Alp 44s were only so strong. These are the, these are the Alp 44s, and they were actually replaced by the Alp 46 and the Alp 45s. The Alp 45s are stronger, and they are dual purpose locomotive so they can either run on electric power or diesel power and the reason why that they got rid of these is they can only they were only designed to pull the comet cars the single level cars so when the bi-levels came around then they tested these out on the um Atlantic City Express service and they figured out that these could not function as well as the other locomotives so uh, like I said, they put them on the Atlantic City, uh, Atlantic City Express line, or the Aces, um, and they used them as cab cars for a very short amount of time. Um, so, New Jersey Transit was not using these for a very long amount of time, and there's four of them in the Meadowlands Maintenance Center, and or the MMC, and that is in Secaucus. Or you have 32 of them, which are actually here, um, up in Port Morris and the 
locomotives are here on the Lackawanna cutoff, which is actually being restored by Amtrak uh, to um, have service from New York Penn Station to Scranton. Uh, so they are going to be replacing this line. The last revenue train on the Lackawanna cutoff from here all the way to Scranton was in, 19, in the 1960s. Hmm. So it's going to be really cool to see trains running through here again. When's it going to be? When's that going to happen? Do we know? They are saying in the tw in like 2030-ish, but if this part isn't restored and they still got a long way to go. That's a long time, yeah. It's, it's a lot to chew. Like that. Old circuit panel there. Mm-hmm. These are all your circuit breakers. And here, these were... Um, they have pentagraphs on top, but New Jersey trains have ripped them out. Um, these locomotives are actually planned on being scrapped, so um, it's actually really cool to see these while you can. The pentagraphs on top would go above to the catenary wires, and they would get their power from there. These are commonly used on the Montclair Booten line, which is what goes um, through Nakong and stuff. Uh, that is all that uh, splits in. Um, Denville, I believe. And after Denville, it splits to go through Montclair and through the Montclair State University and then joins again at Newark Broad Street. And then you can make connections to New York Penn Station or Hoboken from there. Cool. In order to accelerate, doesn't doesn't want to move, right? Pull it up and it, has, it needs a reverser. So the reverser goes right here. On the side, there should be a reverser handle um holder it's not there looks like they ripped it out this is a horn lever the other horn lever's there emergency brake on that side for your conductor you have your um main reservoir and um two main reservoirs on the bottom side of the locomotive here you can see your speedometer uh all indications you have more indications up here uh test panels there's a test panel here which is in other locomotives uh, this is your voltage gauge. Uh, this is your throttle. Here are your strobe lights, so you can ma you can make these auto. So if you were entering a station, you blow the horn and you would have the bell right there. So the strobe lights on top would actually turn on. These are your ditch lights. The ditch lights are the lower two lights on either side of the locomotive. The headlights are either in the middle or up top. Um, horn up top, other horn, still up top. And here you would have the bullhorn for manual crossings. Uh, you would have fuses and um, for like uh, lighting flares and stuff in there. Um, I'm sorry, fuses for the uh, actual electronics bay. I'm sorry. Um, what's in here? Quantum engineering. Oh, it looks like a cassette player. Yeah, I think it's a cassette player. You can hook up a laptop here. That really dates this place, huh? I uh, was here and I found a piece of paper from 2010 giving all of the details on when these things are being retired and where. Wow. And it was effective in 2010. Here you have a fridge. These were supposed to stay at 33 degrees. This is a skeleton key. So they still use skeleton keys on the railroad, um, which is really, really cool. So these are for the locomotives or what they call Comet cars. Comet cars still use skeleton keys. I cannot speak for by levels. The cool part about these locomotives, if you pinch here, pull the window down. Emergency brake, you can pull that up. So when you pull that up, you pretty much let all the air in the reservoirs go to the brakes. And if um, you ever see a train go in emergency, which hopefully some of you guys don't, um, there's gonna be a really loud rush of air. It's deafening. I've heard it once and plan I don't plan on hearing it again. And all those brakes, you can hear them slam against the wheels and that train will stop. So um, even if, you see a train in the distance and the gates are down, don't try to beat it because that is something that no engineer or conductor or anybody wants to pull. Um, and my friend lost to a train and I really, uh, 
I really feel bad for her family because there was nothing that the crew could do. They tried everything. And even though, even though your car can stop on a dime, these things can take miles to stop. And these can go at a decent speed, almost 80, 90 miles an hour. Yeah. Especially the long freight trains too, right? The long freight trains, uh, imagine uh, two miles, three miles of freight fully loaded behind the locomotives. They can only do so much. Um, and they take ages and ages to slow down. Don't try to beat a train. Yeah. It's worth waiting five minutes and getting to your destination safely than trying to beat the train to save, like I said, five minutes, maybe even less and risking your own life. These are transformers. You'd go on top of the locomotives. I'm surprised that we actually got these in here because these are really heavy. These would go on top of the locomotives. They distribute electricity. Um, so pretty much uh, the power lines that go by your house, these are like, <laughs> look right there, 600 volts. That's not something you really want to play with. I mean, I'm not an electrician, and that itself sounds kind of scary. Here you have seals, and it is, oh, it's actually from Newark. So you would put it here, and that would show when something has been used. They actually use them on ambulances. So this is a handbrake. These are on every single locomotive, every single rail car. So in order to apply it, it up there's a ratchet in here and this will go back up into here and once it gets really hard to crank pull this so you go back up and brakes are released brakes are released time to go oh look at this this is modern so this will give you all indications about the locomotive brakes Brake pressures, everything. This is your cut-ins, cut-outs, so anything that's out of air brakes throughout the train, you'd have to press any of these F keys, and it will actually manually put your train in, uh, or train information in. So, boarding lights, so this is off and on, obviously. So here are your seals, conductor signals, if you press this, there's a little buzz. Um, and if you are on the train in New Jersey, Listen from. You're on the station, pause your music. It takes 30 seconds. So if you're at the station, you hear that means it's time to go. Brakes are going to be released and you're going to be on your way. Um, they can mean a number of different things anything from a brake test to um, indications about where you're going, um, how long it's going to take, anything. This could also signal, uh, tell the um, engineer that the conductor needs to speak with him. Like I said, here's your indication. So this is your test. Uh, you have your emergency strobe lights. So when you hit that brake right there, this will turn on. Um, sanding, there's sand on the bottom of the locomotives. They look like little uh, spoons coming off the, towards the wheels. Um, you have your crossing bells, strobe and strobe lights on. Um, that's nice, it's uh, your fault. The uh, New Jersey transit conductors and engineers like to play little tricks on each other. Wheel slip. Uh, so if your wheels are slipping, you're going to have to use your sanders, um, and if your wheels are slipping, you hit your sanders button, which somewhere around here, this light will turn on, this should go away, hopefully, you throttle back on your power, and uh, your train should go. Um, you have your center door closed, and doors closed, so on larger trains, like the Comet cars, the single levels, so you have the doors in the middle, which are the express doors, and then you have the local doors, uh, which can actually go down with the steps. Handbrakes, like I said, that's what I just, uh, that's what I just used. Train brakes are released, um, train brakes are applied, and that's pretty much about it. And here you can see um, another locomotive that will be here. I know a couple that have them. You have your master controllers, your brakes go here, uh, horn lever goes here, and the rest is just like any other locomotive. So, yeah. Cool. Cab signal certification. So, the, um, this will test. This is what they have to put in the locomotive when they get maintenance. I have the maintenance records. Um, I'll send pictures if you guys give me your email. 
So I'll send pictures of it for one of these locomotives on the deadline. So uh, it'll give you everything you need to know about the locomotive's history, cool. maintenance date, any uh, the amount of days that they're in the shop, the amount of days that they're out of the shop, and the total amount of days that they're in the shop from the day they got it. So there's two ways to hit the horn in here. So you got that. There's another one over here. Or you have the uh, modulated horn valve. So there's two different ways to blow the horn in this train. Really cool feature about this locomotive. That's a long way down, isn't it? There's a... There's still 30 more of these things, too. That's crazy. It sucks, because I saw her maybe day four. How long ago was this? investigation like I was talking about earlier you have your strobe lights They're right there uh, so you can actually see little strobe light caps yeah they're on the ground everywhere there's one over there yep so like I said these things were electric, and I don't know if you guys are coming up here. Oh yeah, you are. <laughs> hell of a view too. There is a hell of a view. Look at that. So, like I said, this is where the pentagrass would go. Pentagrass would go either side. These ha these are, um, these are your. Uh, insulators. The only, the I was gonna only say, way I was that these joking. things could ever work yeah. again is by the grace of God <laughs> <laughs> and an electric city. So you need you need uh, overhead catenary lines. Yeah. These would uh these would hold them down. So these were they were actually on springs. After after Hurricane Sandy, New Jersey Transit had a a bayhead yard full of comet cars. They had, they were the Comet 2s, so they were before, uh, I'm sorry, they were the Comet 3s, my bad. Um, the Comet 2s were phased out a long time ago. So the Comet, um, the Comet 3s were left there during Hurricane Sandy, and as you know, Hurricane Sandy decimated New Jersey, and Bayhead Yard was pretty much underwater, so those cars were pretty much just left there, and trans, like, Oopsie. And uh, they were sitting there until this summer and they actually scrapped them. So I was I was lucky enough to go to Bayhead Yard and see them and I uh, snapped some pictures. <coughs> that's a hell of a view from up here too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Buddy said a uh, whole word of advice is don't jump from locomotive to locomotive. So yeah, I don't. I wasn't <laughs> planning on it. But yeah, I mean, in either direction, they just go on and on. More, more down that way. You can't even see the end. Here's the comma cars. Oh, uh, those old ones. Yep. So these were flooded during the hurricane. So and they were just left there for yep. since then. They're just left there. So they brought them to Bradley Beach, and they had um, two GP40s. And they'd bring cut after cut after car of cars, and uh, they'd bring them there. And there's a scrapping company, and they were scrapped for aluminum. It's kind of eerie about these locomotives that they've just been sitting here. They've been through hurricanes. They've been through massive thunderstorms. You name it, they've been through it. And yet there's still fans spinning. And the only time that they actually get use is for people exploring them or using them as shelters or some sort of weekend hangout where they can come with their buddies. Oh, here's your radio. Here's a radio antenna. Cool. Yep. Strobe lights. Grab irons. Um, and then if you ground pentagraph before going on roof. So if you pull it, that will actually release the pentagraph. So that is what this is. And then if you follow the bar, the bar goes behind me, over to here, this will hold up or 
or this, this is a down position. And then over there, you can see it's in the uh, release position. These will actually grab onto the pentagraph and pull them down. So each locomotive has a certain end. You have the F end and the B end. The easiest way to tell the locomotive has F. F signifies the front of the locomotive and the designated front of the locomotive. On the inside of the locomotive, you can see a little F. That locomotive does not have an F, so if you go over to this side and look in the locomotive, you'll actually see a B. So yep. that is the it's F right end. in there. Might not come out on camera, but it's there. So you have the F end and the B end of a locomotive. So you can see them on any passenger car that has a cab or any locomotive. This. Really cool. Cool. Freight locomotives only have one side they can control, to my knowledge. Like modern ones. So the ones that only have one section and they actually have a cab is always designated as the F end of the locomotive. So you'll actually see those on uh, freight locomotives, passenger locomotives. Anywhere you go, you'll see them. You gotta pay attention. The great part about this railroad, or the railroad, is it is very underappreciated by a lot of people. The GoPro that you're recording with, the camera that you have, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing, sunglasses on my head, I guarantee you those were brought by train. Now, you have Amazon, uh, have Amazon Prime, or you have USPS, UPS, FedEx, anything. Those go on intermodal trains. Intermodal trains are really cool. So they actually come with containers. The most popular containers are 40 foot, 48 foot, and 50, uh, 53 foot containers. Um, they have uh, all those different types of trailers and they still have piggyback trains, which is really cool. Um, so these locomotives were designated for passenger service, passenger service only. The only operator that I know of right now that still has these um, is Caltrain. They are using them to test their uh, electric locomotives. They actually bought the um, AEM-7s. Uh, they bought three or four of them from Amtrak and they brought them out there on a Union Pacific train. And now, they, now there's one painted in the Caltrain paint scheme that is actually pulling the test trains around for their new electric uh, MU bi-level cars. Really cool. Yeah. This is an MU cable. MU cables let you tie locomotives together. So I come over here, the giant prongs that you're, the giant patches that you're holding up earlier, these will actually go into them. So, whatever direction the hose goes down is the bottom. So you take it and then you fold it or you push it up into here. There's a little notch on the bottom. You line that notch up. Pull an ass. It will actually slot in. There you go. A little loop. Yeah, it's, it's in. Oh, it's in? It's in. Let it go. So, oh, and that keeps it there. That will actually um, tie into the other locomotive. So, if you look, it's the perfect distance to tie into the second locomotive. They are 27 point jumpers. So, there's 27 of these. And each one of them is numbered. So, you have to connect that and these yep. together? Yep. Here's your air hoses. And all that shit. Air hoses, um, and you're gonna laugh, but the way that you cut them in or you cut them out is using an angle cock. <laughs> so. Interesting name. Yep, here's one right here. You have the angle cock, push down, you twist, 
air is flowing. And then to cut it out, pull it, pu uh, push up, pull it back down. Make sure the other one's un untouched and you're free to go. And if you want to uncouple cars, you have the draw bar. Pull it or pull it up, or you push it down or pull it up. For this one, I think it's, yeah. And these, these are uh, based off of a pin system. So uh, if you pull them on most rail cars, there's actually a pin. It'll lift up. And these are knuckle style couplers. So if you pull the pin, it will unleash the knuckle and you have to pull it. So you have to stand back here, pull it up, make sure that you are able to jump back out and uh, pull the train apart. But you gotta make sure, because that's not the only danger. The second danger is you got pressurized air still in there. Mm. The angle cock just means that there's no air still flowing. There's, those pipes are still pressurized. When those locomotives pull apart, they're meant to detach from each other. So they're gonna have like a really loud and they're gonna fling shit everywhere. But uh, that's how you uncouple two locomotives, two rail cars. Nice. Very cool. So you found these on the ground. What do yeah, they say? Found them here. Um, Nork Bulletin or Nork Division Bulletin. So this is for switching operations. They're stapled together. This is instructions on how to couple the train. Movement on multiple locomotives. Table of contents. This is how to cut in and cut out the locomotives. This is how to um, set the air brakes. Rare and Valley Line items. That's weird. These things never ran on the Rare and Valley Line. Rare and Valley Line is diesel only. Wow, look at that. There's the date. Effective 12, uh, 12 01 a.m. Saturday, November 21st, 2009. So that gives us an idea. Gives you an the idea. Age of these things, how long they've been here. Mm -hmm. These are your sanders. So sand will shoot out of here at a high pressure. Um, and you have sand reservoirs up in here. The sand will go through there. And they will actually give traction to a locomotive. Here you have step lights. So these will actually shoot beams of light here so you can see the steps and you can see the ground where you're stepping. Um, and uh, that is the sand fill hatch. Um, oh, here are your dip lights. That's what the inside of them looks like. So it's simply, uh, pretty easy. Uh, simple to paint the ditch lights. Your headlights, couplers again. Looks like someone blew this fire extinguisher open. And nice. <laughs> someone left an interesting newspaper in there. So here's one last shot of the whole line of trains behind me. You can see it extends forever. We're back at the first one now. We just finished checking out all these abandoned locomotives here. This was a really cool stop. We saw a lot of great stuff. Got a lot of awesome information. I've never actually been inside of one of these things before and I've always wanted to. So I'm really pumped that I got to do that today. Expect more train content coming soon. I got a lot of cool spots, kind of like this, some train stations I want to do coming up. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you like train content, be sure to subscribe. I got a lot more coming. I hope everybody enjoyed coming along on this one with me and I hope you got something out of it. We'll see you guys next time.